limited quarter three and nine month FY24 earnings call to start. I trust you have an opportunity to review our financial results and investor presentation, both available on the company's website and on stock exchanges. Joining me on this call is Mr. Anand Sharma, our Executive Director and Group CFO, and as the Investor Relations Advisor. The success of any organization is measured by the value it creates and the growth it achieves. Each product we craft and manufacture is a step towards enhancing lifestyles and consumer experiences, elevating industry standards over time. Careful journey involves exploring new opportunities through market expansion and product innovation, steering towards sustained growth and value creation. We are also standarding our leadership team at first and second level to have sufficient management bandwidth to meet the fast pace, sustainable growth of the company. Our focus on brand domination is evident through global partnerships with reputed home improvement retailers. The home improvement market has witnessed substantial growth driven by evolving consumer preferences for aesthetics and comfort. Buyers now place higher emphasis on creating kitchen and bathroom spaces that complete their, uh, their living environment. We continue to pursue our multi prolonged and holistic growth strategy uh, with a focus on upgrading our state-of-the-art technology, investing in R&D, making the right JPEG, investing in the brand visibility, expanding reach via dealer and distributor network across India, expanding newer geographies around the world. Carousel is progressively pacing towards establishing the brand entity in the kitchen and bath segment both domestically and internationally. We are steadily moving up the value chain, capturing the minds of niche customer segments across categories such as sports things, stainless steel things, kitchen top fabrication, built-in appliances, and faucets. Our focus on increasing capacity utilization in the sports things category has been steady progress, reaching 70% by end of nine month FY24, and expected to further on quarter on quarter basis. The profit margins of our sports things remain steady, and our commitment to sustain the stability in the foreseeable future. In the stainless steel segment, we expand our capacity by adding 90,000 units in the last quarter, bringing total 180,000 units. The demand in this segment remains strong with the capacity utilization of 67% of quarter and year for December 2023. Our performance in the US and the UK market continues to be strong. The destocking process concluded inventory to return to normal levels. European markets, for products we made at a similar level compared to last year. While the overall global scenario is a path of improvement, the Red Sea scenario emerged towards the end of Q3 FY24 poses a little risk. We are closely monitoring the situation as the ocean freights have been risen considerably. It is also increasing the sailing time by approximately two weeks more. However, it is pertinent to note that 90% of exports are on FOB basis and therefore it will not have any if it has any impact margins, uh, it will be very marginal on our margins. Domestically, our business is thriving, marked by a significant expansion of our dealership network from 1,500 to 2,209 month FY24. There has been a enhanced, uh, significant expansion. I'm just focusing it back on the dealer expansion in the Indian market. And the brand will be across India to division efforts by our sales and marketing team. On the 20th October, we successfully made an acquisition of United Granite LLC. The study acquisition has now been fully integrated into operations. Contributing to our total income, the acquired entity United Granite LLC financials consolidated to results in the quarter exhibits low margins, which has impacted overall margin of our company on a consolidated basis. However, we are expecting better operating margins in coming quarters due to various steps actually taken by improvement, material sourcing, and business expansion. We anticipate the efforts to translate to improve financial results in the coming quarter, underlining our commitment optimizing the potential of this acquisition. Uh, our UK operation carries to be progressing well. Uh, we have been successful integrating synergies between UK companies across selling our current uh, Crossing our current product lines, using the common customers, pays, and market for further business expansion. With consumer shifting their focus on more aesthetically pleasing and high quality, we anticipate the fabrication market for kitchen top will improve for the near future. I would also like to give a good news about our new tires with Howden's UK. Howden's UK is the number one kitchen manufacturer 
in the UK. It has 750 depots and it makes about more than a billion. It has 27 uh, granite malls. They sell 10,000 kitchen sinks per week. That's 500,000 kitchens per annum. Their gross revenue is 3.3 billion pounds with approximately 20% EBITDA margin. That's been a great feather on the cap for our UK team. And we also have got received the first order from them. Now coming to the appliance division, the exciting to inform you that we have initiated the sale of appliances from our new manufacturing setup. Looking ahead by March 2024, a state-of-the-art facility capable of producing one lakh units annually will be fully operational. Despite the alliance with our commitment to the growing demand on the for sustained success in this sector. Our operations in Dubai have commenced and are witnessing positive response from the market. The encouraging feedback affirms the visibility of strategies in international markets. On another front, we have taken a significant step in Turkey by establishing a subsidiary company, setting the foundation of operations in this region, where operations in Turkey are yet to commence and we are optimistic about the opportunity that market holds for us. Uh, to just inform uh, the members that we have already started uh, our sales from our United Arab Emirates entity. In the last quarter itself, we have started sales of our things and of the appliances under the Carousel brand. Uh, these developments underscore are dedicated to strategic expansion and diversification. We are actively pursuing opportunities for growth both domestically and internationally. I remain confident with the positive impact this initiative will have on overall performance and financial outlook. I will now hand over the call to Anand Sharma, Executive Director and Group CFO, to update you on the company's financial performance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Let me take you through the consolidated financial performance of the company. Quarter 3, FY24 performance. Consolidated total income stood at 188.8 crore for quarter 3, FY24. It grew by 37% year-on-year -year and 40.7% quarter-on-quarter basis. EBITDA for quarter 3, FY24 stood at 36.1 crore. Grew by 42.8% YNY and 6.4% quarter on quarter basis. Profit after tax and managing interest stood at 15.3 crore in quarter 3 FY24. Grew by 27.2% on year on year basis. Coming to the 9 month FY24 performance, sales volume for quarter stood at 4.1 lakh units, standard steel spin stood at 84. 3,000 units, kitchen appliances, faucet, FWD, bath and other products stood at 40.9 units in 9 months of FY24. Consolidated total income stood at 496.1 crore for 9 months FY24 as compared to 448.3 crore in 9 months FY23. It grew by 10.7 percent by an oil basis. EBITDA of the company for 9 months FY24 stood at 97.4 crore as compared to 82.4 crore of last year 9 months FY23. It grew by 80.3%. EBITDA margin for 9 months FY24 stood at 19.6% compared to 18.4% of last year 9 months. Profit after tax and monetary interest stood at 42.4 crore in 9 months FY24 as compared to 40 crore of last year 9 months FY23. Growth is 5.9 percent. Thank you. Now I open the floor, floor for question and answer. Over to the operator. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. In order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, please restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We'll take a first question from the line of Preetesh Sheta from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, uh, these acquisitions that we do in the fabrication side, uh, first of all, if you could share a little bit uh, logic where in terms of these acquisitions, and do we add any substantial fixed cost uh, in these acquisitions? Because uh, if, if let's say, there is any downturn, do we see any significant operating deleverage on account of these uh, acquisitions that you do? Yeah, it is very good to hear from you again. Uh, are you talking about mainly U.S. or also our U.K. business? Or both, both, sir. Both, sir. You, generally, the fabrication uh, business in general. Okay, so generally, fabrication businesses, I think we have proven in the last two years since our U.K. acquisition that, that we wanted to strengthen our brand presence and our product presence in that particular region. That's one. Number two is we wanted to have the cross-selling opportunity, but sometimes not just that technology, but it also helps us to do a lot of new customers, which you can take a whole lifetime, but you cannot enter. Everything is, it takes a lot of time. Third thing, it's a strategic diversification. It's because everything is been installed on a workshop. So we need this fabricated. Fourth thing I also mentioned about the fabrication business, technology has to come back to our country, has to come to India. So India does not have a, uh, have a organized fabrication business. So, uh, so these are the opportunities that you can have it with having a thing and a fabrication business. The new trend has also started across the world that most of the things that I am now entering, after we enter, they all have started looking for entering the fabrication. Everybody wants to value add, uh, you know, just add uh, value to uh, value to their portfolio. As far as fixed costs are concerned, I think uh, I think you have seen in the UK that our margin since we acquired has improved. Uh, we we uh, we also add from. Our side, when we do the due, due diligence, we, we, you know, we already find those pockets where the guys are not taking action. Mm -hmm. So I think we, what we do is for us, we try to scale up. Second thing, we try to get a better sourcing um, margins in it. And third, we have, um, we, we do a lot of brand and marketing activities, which normally the, the owners of that company do not do it. So I think, UK has done quite well. The figures are in front of you. The UK, the US business we have just acquired. So yeah, there is a fixed cost, but there is already a downturn. So whatever you are saying right now is with the down downturn. So uh, we already got the hint that the economy, both in the, uh, especially the US is now going up. And whatever the current, the last quarter, which I'm going to later on, we will share with you. Um, this it's it's been with the down downturn and anyway the quarter three is always a seasonal quarter so, so yeah. Do you need to do any more acquisitions in the fabrication side or this is enough in these two countries? Right now, right now, till we get a fully hang of it, we, we are not planning to do. Right now, I think our focus is back on the granite things. We have a lot of opportunities here. The U.S. business is going to scale scale up on its own. And once the fabrication business, we get a complete hang on it. Uh, we will then try to see if that fab company is able to generate that much liquidity and cash flows to acquire another U.S. business from that fab business. Okay. My second question is, sir, uh, you mentioned about the retailer which does about 10,000 kitchens per week. Uh, and, and that's a client which you got. Uh, do you now feel that the, the 200,000 capacity of course which you had postponed earlier in terms of expansion, uh, that is now more closer than you think, than you earlier thought? Uh, I... I think you kind of answered my question, all I can say is that, so I think we are quite close to uh, starting our plan number four, but we will know by next quarter. But yes, it's, that gap is getting narrow, yes. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. I'll come back if I have more questions. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Aditya Pal from Motila Loswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, so just wanted an update. Last quarter we had discussed that uh, there will be a new order from IKEA for stainless steel things. Uh, 
So is there any update on that? Sir, can you speak a little bit louder and slow please? I'm not able to hear you. Thank you. Uh, am, am I audible now? Your handset mode. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Perfect. So just wanted to know, uh, last quarter we had spoken that uh, we, we, were, we were supposed to receive an order from IKEA for our stainless steel products. So is there any update on that? The stainless steel thing. Yeah, so the yeah. stainless steel, uh, so the stainless steel, say, uh, IKEA, I think it, the commencement is going to start from next quarter. All right. And if you can just highlight or quantify the order book or the orders that we will receive then? Yeah, so, so I think as of now, uh, I will not be in a position to tell you because the agreement is agreement put in place, but it's, a, but it's a good and a reasonable quantity. Yeah. All right. Uh, and so our, our standalone gross margins have reduced. Okay. On a on a quarter on quarter basis, and our, our console gross margins are also reduced. So, anything to highlight over there? I don't think so. Our margins are reduced. No, the margins have improved. Yes. Uh, so, standalone, I can just I can just quickly tell you the numbers. So standalone, we are at 55, and last quarter we were at 61. Whereas consolidated last quarter we were 53 and right now we are 52.6 so so my major question is wanted to understand that why such a big drop has come on a q and q basis and standalone so so actually if you want to see the gross margin you have to see on the nine month basis because quarter and quarter mm. basis there are some inventories lying because of some shipment is not going in the last quarter or the week before that, that is valued as the inventory price. So to okay. that extent, our RMC uh, cost may increase. So that's why it's quarter to quarter variation. If you look at the nine month basis, our market yeah. is improved. Yeah. So this, this, this can be attributed to the two weeks delay that we are facing because of the Red Sea, right? Well, I'm sorry. May I request you to join back the queue, please? Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Dhawan Shah from Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So my question is uh, on the uh, court side. So given that, you know, the most of the retailers had destocked uh, the inventories in the export market uh, in the last few quarters, and now there is a concern of the in increase in the transit time because of the Red Sea. So have you witnessed the uh, larger inquiries for restocking? Uh, because, you know, the uh, you already mentioned that the demand itself is very good in the U.S. and U.K. market. So is there any more inquiries coming in to restock the larger inventories? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, I, so I believe that the next order is flowing in because people are just opening after Christmas. And I'm sure that this is, we have already seen the flows. But this more issues have started now. I think now the customers, we will note in the next, uh, two two months uh, is for stocking what is their plan, and I'm I think I'm I, I think I'm looking at the situation and almost doubling the lead. I'm sure that there would be some inventory stocking because the new customers are very important customers, and I think they would like to see that they do not uh, this satisfy them. Yeah. Okay. And and in the last quarter, I think you mentioned that. For the court side, we can do roughly 20% volume growth in this year. That means that we can do roughly 6 lakh, uh, 10,000 things. So are you on the track? Uh, because I think in the first nine months, we did roughly 4 lakh, 11,000 things. Uh, so in the last quarter, can we do roughly 2 lakh, 2.1 lakh kind of the volumes? So I think I, all I can say that we are on, uh, you know, track. We are on track. I think our last quarter... As uh, you know, I think we have shown, uh, which I had, uh, I kind of, uh, I, I think my, my both my the top line guidance and the bottom line guidance was there. Not, I think we are on track based on that. Yeah. Sure, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Vedic from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Um. 
good evening sir uh, congratulations on good set of numbers i have uh, two questions uh, firstly i want to know uh, how much would united granite uh, contribute for this quarter in our revenues so you are talking about the sales sorry uh, sales sales so yeah so i am talking about the recent acquisition in terms of revenue how much would this contribute in this quarter i am thinking crore 15 crores ah uh, 15 15 okay and uh, so the next question would be on the stainless zinc side uh, we can see that the uh, so we can see that there is volume growth but on the realization side there is a huge dip on the stainless zinc side so any particular reason for that Okay. There is not a huge difference of the relation. I had the numbers which says that we are about 5,700 per thing, and we are close to 5,630. That is only because there was mainly CIA earlier which we converted to FOB. So overall value relation is not an issue. Price is <laughs> there are few few changes because of the geography mix. Depends on whether we have more CIF and the FOB. Depends on that. Other model mix. Also model mix. Also model mix. Model mix. There will be change. If I think across the five to ten percent quarter on quarter, depending upon the yes. market and model mix. But it's not change actually. It is in the same line. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Okay, yeah. sir. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Abhilasha Satale from Quantum ANC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, Can so, you uh, see, more please. It's not very clear. Yeah, it's clear. Is it better now? Yes. Please go ahead. Okay. yeah uh, so uh, so my question is regarding you know this quarter we have seen some margin uh, decline uh, you know margin moderation because of the integration of united granite uh, uh, this uh, uh, subsidiary so going forward what is our road path uh, towards improving margin because we are seeing you know we are guiding that even for this subsidiaries we expect margin to improve and for the overall company how it is likely to be on a sustainable basis this is my first so this this quarter we have indication of united granite and there are some one time cost and this quarter is not even the full quarter we acquired the company on 20th october and normally quarter 3 is a lower uh, volume because of the christmas and the new year so the the margin what you see is not a representation of the margin I think from the quarter four onward, you see the better margin, and it will improve quarter and quarter basis. Uh, okay, any uh, range you would like to, uh, you know, give? Uh, say over. I'm not asking for the just near term, but over a medium term, where you want to reach in terms of margins. So I think the margin guidance is already given by us. Long, I think we are always in the range of 18 to 21 percent range. So I think that's where the guidance that we are here will be uh, will be around that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and my second question is like this year we would be cro uh, crossing sales of around six lakh tons in our cords business. So uh, going forward, uh, how are we expecting? You know, seeing the uh, the order uh, what we have in our hand and the visibility what we are getting from our customers. How do we see uh, these sales numbers panning out over a period of time? And by when uh, you will get a visibility in terms of uh, new capacity? Uh, you know the announcement. Uh, of new capacity correct i think one of the gentlemen had asked this question on it so i think the days on the new customer tires and our uh, dealer expansion in india and our new market expansion and what the demand coming on from overall uh, global and india market i think the on quarter on i think the next the next next quarter i think we expect that the uh, the order Booking for the granite thing. I mean, we already see the trend uh, improving, and I think that's going to slowly take us to our one million mark capacity. Mm, uh, yeah. So, so like, uh, ma'am, I request you to join back the queue, please, as we have other participants waiting. 
Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Resha Mehta from Green Edge Wealth. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is on your domestic business. If you could highlight uh, how's the progress been your both on the B2B side as well as on the B2C side. Also, you did mention about the softness in uh, demand in India. Uh, so is that impacting our plans of, you know, achieving uh, 200 crore revenue by FI26? And also, if you could mention that uh, how has been the gallery edition and what uh, gallery count are we at? Okay, so what was your question two? I may mean, not able to get that. The first one I got it on the B two B B two C. What was the question two, please? Yeah, so the progress on both on B two B and B two C in the domestic market, and also uh, you uh, did mention about you know India demand being soft in your presentation. So uh, does that deter us from reaching our 200 crore uh, guidance uh, in terms of top line by FY26 and the gallery count? So I, uh, uh, so I, so this is a new B2B, uh, B2B vertical now and a new team dedicated towards that. We have in the last uh, four months cracked a lot of new projects, including I would give last result is DLM. So I think that has helped a lot. Approximately our 20% of our institution project sales that are really moving forward for both the stern Hagen and the carousel, the B2B business, it looks quite encouraging. And to fuel momentum to this, we are expanding our team of B2B approximately about three times than what we have right now. Currently we have about five people across India. We are planning to expand this to 15 uh, people by the first quarter. Uh, because it's, uh, we see that we have a lot yet to tap and we need to educate people to do this. I think that's a good sign. Uh, two is, uh, uh, as far as our 200 crore on the India side, yes, I think that's strong. I think, I think we are quite confident that we are, uh, we are quite confident to achieve that 200 crore in the, in the next two years time. Uh, we are expanding our product range, uh, quite Considerably, that's one. We are two. We are having a new brand ambassadors uh, in the quarter one. Uh, we are adding a lot of new mo models in uh, quarter one. Four, we are inducting. We have inducted. They are all joining from next month. A full-fledged marketing uh, team to promote and uh, <coughs> brand our products, which is we have not been very active in India. Yeah. So I think we are quite confident that uh, I think we would like to achieve a 200 pro mark in Nomaste within the next two years. Uh, and the gallery count here? Gallery, we have around 75 galleries, including uh, shopping, shopping shops. shops. Yeah. So all this new gallery, we have kind of upscaled it. Now, if you see the Gurgaon Gallery, which opened about 4,000 square feet in Delhi, that is kind of faster lot of uh, interest across the North India market. People from South also are traveling all the way to uh, the our Guru, Guru, uh, Guru Graph Gallery, one in Sector 29. It's uh, the best gallery in our class you would ever see. So I think we would kind of like to upscale our old standard branding display. And we would like to be the best in the cat category. So all the new galleries now we are tying up with. We have a lot of uh, we have a lot of traction and improving new galleries which we are opening. So I think going to be a lot of galleries. Uh, I think I think my VP had told me he signed at about 40, 50 galleries for the next year, which should be coming up within the next six months. Right. And on the second question, so this is specifically for the UK market. So we've made uh, three acquisitions there so far: uh, Carousel Products, Surfaces, and uh, Tap Factory. So, you know, you spoke about the synergies there. So can you just highlight, like, you know, what are the synergies on the back end, the manufacturing side, uh, on the distribution side? How successful have we been in terms of, you know, cross-selling to our customers across these three companies? And, of course, now since the scale has become large, so do you have a common head for your UK business or organizationally? How, uh, you know, is the people management uh, for the UK business? Yeah. So I think our UK business is quite well integrated right uh, right now. Um, if you see the UK economy by itself, uh, when we had posted good results for our UK, people could not believe that the UK is so bad. Uh, I had a lot of questions by investors last few quarters. But I think that worked out really well. Uh, 
uh, we have we we have shown growth in UK. So while the downturn is about 20 30 percent in the home market, we have gone up by 30 percent in the home market. So that's one. Uh, number two is um, as, as 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 far as the organization is concerned, we have a group CEO right now over there, and we have three managing directors in the UK uh, who are handling each independent company. Number three, now finally now we have taken a call to integrate all the companies at one base. We have planned to open a big base which is called Logistic Way of Incibilities, our showroom. Uh, also we have my daughter who, uh, who is inducted newly into the marketing activities is, is right now in UK and trying to launch or try to integrate the carousel brand in UK. So it's a lot of integration happening in UK at this time because in the day we want to bring all this together and try to, uh, uh, yeah, we would, we would like to centralize all this at one base. Yeah. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nikhil Gara from Abacus AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so the first question is uh, uh, specifically uh, uh, just on the subsidiary numbers. Uh, now, when I look at, uh, you know, the the breakup for uh, uh, the other expenses as well as the employee expenses, uh, there has been a sharp uh, uh, increase, close to 10 crore increase in other expenses and a 4-5 crore increase in employee expenses. Uh, is it purely because of un the, the integration of United LLC? So, uh, Nikhil, this is not because of only United United. Mm -hmm. This is because quarter and quarter we have increased our capacity utilization. So, there we have added people. Number one. Number two, we are also building a team for the further expansion to cater our new customer <laughs> under uh, pipeline. So, there are training requirements, some skill manpower requirements. So, we are adding that. And there is also the increment the round which has happened in the uh, in the quarter, so that has come as a one-time effect in the quarter three. So these are the three factors, but as I said, these will not come every quarter. It will, on the quarter to quarter, it will stabilize and will percentage, as a percentage will go down. Yeah. Okay, sir. But then in other expenses also, we are seeing this uh, 10 crore jump uh, from 12 crores to 21 crores. So it, it is only in uh, relation to the sales. If you see the sales grown, it's grown by 37 percent. So in terms of that, you are going by the absolute numbers. If you go by the percentage, it is not increased. It's all variable. Uh, okay, so because uh, percentage-wise as well, uh, it's gone from 17 percent to 25 percent. So uh, that is that is one time it, uh, of United Granite also. So we have to understand that United Granite came for uh, less than 70 days and we have to integrate the... You can later... Nikhil? Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. If, you, if you need any further detail, I am available, we can provide you. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, so my uh, second question... Uh, uh, is, uh, you know, specifically on this uh, uh, acquisition of a bigger client in UK. Uh, so, uh, how much uh, uh, incremental volumes, uh, I know it's still early days, but what kind of uh, uh, business can you see from this client? Uh, is, can, is it something which can become very big in future? So, I think, uh, Nikhil, I had uh, mentioned to you that these guys uh, make uh, about more than half a million which is uh, uh, here and out of that, we know that about 25 to 30 percent they use granite things. If I take that ratio, it comes to about 125 to 150,000 per granite things. Correct. So I think it could be a sizable uh, volume. Uh, as per what the discussion, we, we already got the first order. It's quite a big, big, big order in size. I think based on the discussion we had, I think they want 100 percent get converted to us. So I think the opportunity moving forward lies quite huge. Yeah. Got it, sir. And just one last question on the uh, the overall uh, impact from this uh, uh, Red Sea uh, uh, issue. Uh, uh, do you think, uh, while you mentioned there could be some lumpy orders possible, uh, but do you think that uh, uh, this could also 
uh, further, uh, you know, our uh, market share in the overall scheme of things, uh, which we are already seeing? Yeah, so good question. I think this uh, Red Sea thing, if I would try to look at more from an entrepreneur point of view, I think this Red Sea is going to be a blessing for us because most of the, especially in the stainless steel thing side and all, so a lot of the Chinese import costs have doubled because of this. And uh, they're not able to supply. So we have, been, just in the last few weeks, we are on inquiries for our granite things. Uh, in for the Europe and for the U.S. market. So while we understand on short term that we we may face some uh, larger voyage uh, uh, transit time, we have to do uh, the larger lead times. But I think overall, I think on the business side, we can have more opportunities here. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Akshay Shah from Chris PMS. Please go ahead. One moment, please. Mr. Shah? Yes? Your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you for opportunity, sir. Sir, you have mentioned in the presentation that quad sing market is growing annually at the rate of 25% CADR. Well, we are not able to do the same. Now we are we have a strong distribution network in US and UK. So can we expect that uh, we will grow at the rate of twenty five percent in future? So I don't know where this guidance has come from. This granite sink uh, growth, but all, but all I can over, say overall, it is mentioned that granite sink is growing by around twenty five percent year on year. Yeah, that is all. Overall, over uh, market market share is growing. So where the market share is growing very fast. And where um, we have exactly told you that there's a lot of opportunities for us for the granite things. And uh, with this new tire, we are very confident that we, that we, or with the new inquiries and customers on quarter on quarter, we are able to see more growth um, in terms of what things. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rohit Singh from Invest Analytics Advisory LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Singh, please use your handset mode. We are getting an echo. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, good evening, sir. Congrats for a good set of numbers. So my uh, first question is on uh, Kylo side. So Kylo has entered into a new partnership with Carousel. So could you provide more details on the partnership and the ongoing developments in this regard? Sorry, I'm not able to understand the question. Yeah, you said there is a tie up with Carousel? Kylo. Kylo. Uh, yes, sir. Who is Kylo? Sorry. I think uh, I came across... Hello? Yes, yes, please. I came across uh, an article where the Kylo uh, company uh, that mentioned regarding the uh, partnership entered with the carousel. No. Not that we have heard of, honestly. So, okay, I, okay, I will take that offline. Uh, uh, my second question is on basically the outlook. Like you mentioned the new partnership with Howden. Further, IK is also getting expanded uh, in India. And the Red Sea crisis, as you mentioned, are expected to be a blessing for you. So, are we still on for a 750 CR kind of revenue for FY24 and 1000 CR for FY25? I think, uh, I think we are quite on a good growth trajectory at this point of time. Uh, I think we kind of close to the 800 crore run rate and we expect on an improve on quarter term quarter. So the guidance that you earlier given is not in text. That's what you are saying, right? All I am, all I am, what is, what is in text? Not in the guidance of Hygen Crows. He said that we will update on the quarter and quarter. Right now, no, it is eight. So I would like to clarify it. We are, with the current almost 800 crore on Sunday, we are improving. We are, we are on track of 1000 crores. You will see that happening in incremental growth quarter on quarter. Uh, understood, sir. Understood. Last quarter, one 
65, ended at 180, 88. So you will see this quarter on quarter improvement, and that's how we are going to attain the 1000 crore. Unless it's some unseen forcing circumstances happen, it is not under our control. Yeah. Understood, sir. And you mentioned uh, Red Sea crisis in the near term may uh, create the hindrance for us. So, uh, is it uh, correct understanding that the Q4 is likely to be getting uh, getting impacted uh, because of it? Because you are saying Red Sea will our sales get uh, affected. That's what you said. Oh uh, yeah, because in near term, like you mentioned, uh, there may be some problems uh, because of Red Sea, like order delays and uh, voice uh, time uh, increasing. So, do you see any? Uh, short-term impact in Q4 on our sales because of it? You see, the you see the problems are bound to come. You are in an industry and all this logistics, all these kind of problems will keep on coming. And I think it's my job to tell that that these problems are, are there. But none of the problems are inevitable. I mean, everything you, you will be able to, there is a solution to every problem. So as of now, we do not see with our company does not hold any kind of major risk as far as this is concerned. Yes, the lead time has increased, um, the fates have increased, so that's what we have to speak to the customers and we need to align ourselves with them uh, based on their requirements. So we have an issue, but this can be solved amicably by talking to customers, which we already do it. Understood, sir. Okay, oh, that, that's it for my side. I'll take you on the Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Madhav from DMS Wealth LLP. Please go ahead. Hello. Mr. Madhav? Am, am I audible? Uh, yes, but uh, can you use your handset mode, please? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so uh, good evening, sir, by the way. I had a question from my side about... Uh, the contract that we have entered with Howden, so like is it a pass-through contract and in what terms like are we passing the cost in uh, dollar terms or in percentage terms? Yeah, so the Howden's contract is a perpetual contract. Um, uh, it's uh, it's on, uh, it's a, I would say a long-term contract. And the prices for building Howden's are in UK sterling pounds. Okay, so uh, sir, actually my question was like, uh, if there is uh, an increase in the cost in future, so how are we passing those costs? Are we passing them in percentage terms? Yes, we'll be passing on the, the cost. So all our, for example, on the freight exam, so all our terms are on FOB basis. So now whatever the freight increase is, is on that. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Bala Murali Krishna from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, I would like to see an update on this uh, built-in home appliance uh, capex plans. Uh, you know what could be the revenue potential? Sorry, your voice is very low. Uh, okay, could you please update on the? Um, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm using a handset only. Are you able to hear me? No? Yes. Yeah. Uh, could you please update on the uh, built-in home appliance uh, capex? Uh? So built-in home appliance. Uh, yeah. So we have already announced last. Uh, how much did we announce? Ten crores. Uh, capex value. Uh, yes, we have announced. 10 so we had announced about ten crore capex or the built-in appliances, and it's going to start commencing from quarter four. Okay. Uh, what could be the asset term we can expect from that? Asset term would be about five. 5x, yeah. Okay, and secondly, on the um, uh, technology development, like we have uh, some green string, uh, green things and uh, some high strength things we have developed earlier. Is there any uh, progress on the orders or in those things? I'm very sorry, but just did not get you the last question. Can you please say it again, slowly, please, and loudly? Yeah. 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 Uh, we have developed some uh, uh, new technology things uh, like uh, green things and uh, some high strength things we have developed last year. So, is there any progress on the orders uh, in those things? So we are expecting some good orders from those things because they are uh, uh, better performance uh, as compared to the normal conventional things. I think we need to try to understand that if the green things are not just for sale. Green things are there to try to show the 
the values of the company are you a sustainable company are you going on a green global footprint that is kind of it adds image to a corporate and for example the houses what we have uh, what we said that the green thing was one of the major part the because of that uh, because of that we got this order so sustainability and all it's very very important for them we also have increased in for example ikea ikea orders with us has also improved is because we started looking at more as a green company so i think it is uh, uh, i think it's helping a, a lot and indirectly or directly the green thing uh, has 100% has the as the company and what was your second thing order it was about green things right high strength sink so we have developed on that one regarding that any order so now mostly 20% of our export happened in this high strength things because the value is a bit high uh, so i think whatever you see the momentum in the order booking is because of high strength things thank you we have a next question from the line of ca garvit goel from invest analytics please go ahead Uh, hi uh, thanks for the opportunity again so just to get some clarification like uh, i was reading an article or commentary from marcus smith who is a ceo of carisil uk group so he mentioned that the carisil uh, uk has entered into a partnership uh, with uh, the company named k a e l o uh, it is a bottle uh, cooling Kailo. technology company kailo yeah yeah kailo okay yeah exactly. so you are talking kailo is called the brand is called Somalia so Somalia is the new uh, wine chiller it's a new startup for wine chiller buckets yeah yeah so what are the developments ongoing developments in this regard and what kind of opportunities do you see uh, in this area so they have just started the distribution of it i think the i think in the next quarter i'll be able to give you the more like but all i can tell you is that it's been very encouraging the results have been very encouraging because every time you cannot invest in a wine chiller at your home right so what happens is that if you are because most of in the uk and europe most of the people if you call smaller i mean uh, smaller groups they all hang around during kitchen side they have a bar they have stools that they all hang around kitchen side so that's where a wine bottle or a champagne bottle is put and this somalia which is a new technology uh, wine chiller for a single bottle it can adjust to any temperature what you want so the results have been very very encouraging we are also planning to bring this to india next quarter so the announcement in this regard will be in next quarter that's what you were saying right yeah hello yeah okay okay thank you sir thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of nikhil shetty from nuama wealth please go ahead Mr. Shetty, Mr. Shetty, we cannot hear you. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my question is on uh, United Airlines. So it's contributed around 15 crore, and I believe uh, the margin profile is uh, almost half of what uh, currently we are making in a uh, overall business. so uh, if we assume a normalized uh, quarter a q4 then we can expect around 20 25 crore kind of a number from that uh, particular piece so uh, can we expect the margin profile uh, uh, to be lower than 20% uh, this year and next year as well so i think it's i think it's too early to say i think that the the acquisition cost which we did for the united granite was approximately 10% above the level now the quarter 3 is always a very low quarter for the work to work tops and then we had a obviously a one off cost for the acquisition and all quarter 4 is where the things start going with a lot of snow and all that so that's where it slowly now uh with the slow with the spring time comes in fact march we get more orders with too much snow so i think i think is the uh, when it starts getting on quarter and quarter you see the uh, margin improvement and i think we should, by the quarter one it should go back at 10% thank you sir okay sir yeah yeah and uh, my second question is on the overall volume um so uh, 
currently if you look at the uh, courting volume uh, your target is around 6 uh, 6 lakh uh, uh, total unit for fy24 but when we look at the first 9 uh, month um, it seems pretty difficult to achieve those uh, numbers so i can so so i can just tell you from quarter 3 right the quarter 3 how much were the gains in that 58 million so 1 158000 is the quarter if you analyze it it would be six, about 6 lakhs right so this is already the rate we already picked up this rate and as i told you it's going to be further into in the coming quarter so and uh, yeah, i'm i'm talking about sir fy24 uh, so will be quite close to it we will be will be will be quite like uh, will be quite close to it yeah. okay sir yeah that's it from my side thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of manan madlani from kamaya care wealth management please go ahead uh yeah uh, hi thanks for the opportunity uh, so my question was that we are seeing a slow down in germany so uh, are we trying to capture market gain due to that adverse situation going on so why you see a slow down in germany we have a we have a we have a good demand coming from germany for the granite thing so which is good i think it is uh, coming this the last one one then uh, what is it coming on the uh, the uh, the order uh, the order booking is going to be quite strong we also see a sales increase up in uh, germany so which is i think a very good sign okay sure uh, and uh, uh, are we planning to bring our tap business in india so that business is 100% we are doing in india we already launched at the ace tech exhibition we got a overwhelming response in it and so uh, in this uh, we all are doing right now the marketing plan is getting set to rot the hot water taps in the quarter 1 uh, 24 25 so people are very very excited all the top dealers of india have put advance orders to us for this new hot hot water taps So I think we are quite excited. So overall, the faucet business, the tap business, looks very, very encouraging for us. And I think this is going to add cherry on the cake. Sure. Uh, and my last question would be: uh, So, as you said that uh, you know you are trying to achieve thousand crore. So let's say conserv- conservatively, you will achieve in FY twenty six. But uh, the uh, question is that do we need any further capex or uh, you know acquire any further subsidiary to achieve that 1000 crore or uh, our internal capacity have uh, our internal have enough capacity to achieve that 1000 crore demand So I think uh, we have a we are right now all putting our heads to together we have a budget meeting coming up in March and where we are going to carefully strategize our next year and the three years coming forward and you'll be able to answer that uh, after that okay yeah thanks and i wish you all the best okay thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of ronald sioni from share khan please go ahead hello yes please go ahead yes we can hear you go ahead yeah Yeah, I have just one question on uh, the steel sink uh, realization, which you talked about, you know, uh, CIF and FOB basis. So uh, generally, previously, what had happened that two of the quarters would have higher realization because of that uh, geographic mix. So now everything has been normalized. So over the last three quarters, we have seen, you know, normalization of realization. So now this realization, this quarter, should be the benchmark or? There is still, you know, geography mix, and that realization could be higher going forward. Okay, so steel thing realization depends on uh, our product mix. What is the price thing and the quarter thing? Depend on the sales volume, it may change. Number one, number two, we are focusing now on the project sales because there are more project sales we have done in quarter three and. due to that there is a some small realization difference because in projects mostly press thing only goes but it is not a benchmark you have to if you have to benchmark you have to take nine month numbers and then you get a better price realization 
which is which is uh, which will give you a more clarity on the price. Okay. And second question, just on that, uh, that you know, if you are doing projects business and then domestic would be your you know focus area. So should not be that the case that this realization would be lower going forward because you would be also going for more project sales going ahead also. So going forward, there is a export opportunity and the domestic both. We are we have always started export to our UA company. There are export going to Grohe and there are further companies we are doing. So it, it's all depend on the product mix, geography mix, and then we'll see. But we don't feel that relation will go down. Or no, even even and if, can I take this? You are asking more on a B2B activities than the risk right, value right. come down, right? Right, right. No, no, I'll, I'll answer the question. See, the B2B project sales are always on the theory side. It's not on the cheap side. So as far as the stranger sales thing, I think that, that that's on side. As far as the granite things are con concerned and our quadro of stainless steel, we do only the high-end projects where the dilution of the price is not very high. And to compensate that, we always have an 80-20 principle. So while we dilute 20%, of the low low end thing, we also launch another twenty percent of the high value thing to compensate that. So hence, you're able to see on quarter, quarter, year on year, we've been able to improve our margins. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Harsh Shah from Dalal and Bosha. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just one question: uh, Can I get the gross and net debt uh, as on date? Okay, so. Gross debt is around 270 crore on the company as a whole. Mm -hmm. And net debt will be around 260 crore. Okay, yeah. That's it from my side. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, we'll take that as the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Chirag Parekh for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everyone. I hope we've been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. However, if you need any further clarifications or want to know more about the company, please contact our SGA team, our investor relations advisors. On behalf of my colleagues in Cas Limited, I wish you all the best.